Hi friends, Steve here in Ehrenberg, Arizona. If you're on the 10 freeway coming from Los Angeles to Phoenix, as soon as you cross over the California border into Arizona, you cross over the uh, Colorado River, the very first town you come to is Ehrenberg. I mean, it's right on the Colorado River. I'm heading to my mom's this morning in uh, Quartzsite, which is about, I think it's either 15 or 20 miles from here, east of Ehrenberg. The population of Ehrenberg is around 1,500. Quartzsite is around 4,000 to 5,000 people, I think. So Quartzsite's a little bit bigger, and it's still a pretty small town, but Ehrenberg's really small. Now, the reason I'm here is to visit the Ehrenberg Pioneer Cemetery. I was looking at Google Maps the other day online, looking for a route that would take us along the Colorado River. I thought maybe one of these days I would take my mom for a drive along the Colorado River since it's so close to where she lives. And on the map, I discovered that Ehrenberg has a Pioneer Cemetery. So I thought I'd stop by on my way this morning to visit my mom since I'm a little bit early. As you can probably tell, the sun is just coming up. It's a very tiny cemetery, so I thought I would just walk around and just uh, see what I can see. Now, my mom has lived in Quartzsite for 20, 30 years, and this is the 10 freeway here that you see. This is the uh, highway that takes you from Los Angeles to Phoenix, goes right by Quartzsite, goes right by Ehrenberg here, and from the freeway, you can see this monument I have no idea what the monument is supposed to represent. It's not exactly a pyramid, it's more like a, a tower. It's pretty cool. But you can see this from the, the freeway. And for 30 years I've been going back and forth and I never noticed it. So I'm glad that I just accidentally discovered it while I was searching Google Maps the other day and thought I would come and uh, take a walk around and see what we can see. Heading east on Interstate 10, you take the Juno Avenue exit and then you take this roundabout over the freeway heading north and then take the first left-hand turn onto Frontage Road. Then you make a right at the very first street, which is Ehrenberg Parker Highway. I did a little research before coming here and discovered that the town was named after Hermann Ehrenberg, a German mining engineer who mapped the area for the government back in the 1800s. At the time, the area was called Mineral City, but after Ehrenberg's death, it was renamed in his honor. All of these years driving through, I always just thought this was a truck stop. There's a Best Western Motel and a couple of gas stations, and that's about all you see from the highway. It really surprises me that such a prime location located right here on the Colorado River has never been developed. I'm sure there must be a good reason, so if any of you happen to know, please share with us in the comments below. I drove by last week, but it was raining, and so I didn't stop. And I actually drove by it twice before noticing the tiny sign on the street. If you didn't already know that it was here, you probably would never notice it just driving by. I did happen to see a picture online of a large cemetery entrance sign, which is no longer here. Even the large obelisk monument isn't that easy to see from the street. If you do happen to notice it, the sign in the street says first used sometime after June 16, 1862. Some of Arizona's earliest pioneers, people of every race and moral persuasion, lie here in eternal peace. The last burial was on April 22, 1988. Because it's handmade and looks a little bit primitive, I just thought it was an extra large headstone or some kind of a monument but after looking at it for a while, I realized that it's probably an obelisk. Obelisks are of Egyptian origin, and I've seen them in cemeteries all over the country and the world, so I'm surprised that it took me a while to recognize it. The plaque reads, This monument built to perpetuate the memory of the pioneers, trailblazers, and adventurers that rest in these unmarked graves. It was placed here in 1934 by the Arizona Highway Department, and then rededicated on April 27, 2003 by the Ancient and Honorable Order of E. Clampus Vetus, Lost Dutchman Chapter 5917-4. And I really like how the base of this monument includes imprints of what look to be horseshoes and various branding irons. It's also adorned with various artifacts, and tools from the period. I don't recall having seen anything quite like this in any other cemetery I've been to. 
How about you? Have you seen anything like this in cemeteries around the country? There's also a wooden sign here at the entrance. The sign is facing west and the sun is coming up behind it, so it's a little difficult to read, but it says, to the memory of our unknown brothers, Lost Dutchman Colony, East Clampus Vetus, dedicated March 12, 1989. I'm gonna have to look that up. I don't know exactly what that means. But this is a pretty cool monument here. Tower. And marker. So let's go this way. And let's just see what some of these graves say. All right, so this one says unknown. It's kind of neat the way they have the rocks. I've been told over the years that they do this with the rocks to keep uh, animals, wild animals, from digging up the graves once they're buried. And look at that. That looks like maybe uh, an old uh, wagon. This one's unmarked, so there's unknown, and it looks like, just looking real fast, that there's quite a few unmarked here. And this is it. This is the whole cemetery right here. It's very tiny. These, I guess, were the pioneers of Ehrenberg. And look at these forts. And the cactus. And it's pretty cool. It's funny that uh, recently some of you have asked me to visit cemeteries like this where there aren't any famous people, just cemeteries that I might find. And in many ways, they're just as interesting as the grave sites of famous people. One of the big differences though is that most of these grave sites are either unknown or unmarked. Cemeteries like this always make me wonder just how many Old West pioneers and explorers died in the middle of nowhere were buried in unmarked graves, and whose lives were just lost and forgotten. Even here, most of the names of the residents have also been erased by time and the weather. It's pretty likely that most of them had wooden crosses with their names on them when they were first buried, but over the years the wood has deteriorated and their names have been lost. At least that's my guess. Out of curiosity, I just did a search on my phone of findagrave.com and there are a few grave sites here with names on them that are listed on the website, but none of them had biographical information. I was also curious where Herman Ehrenberg was buried. He was a pretty famous person in American history and has his own Wikipedia page that lists his date of birth as October 17, 1816, and his death as October 9, 1866. He died at the young age of 49 in Dos Palmas, California, but I wasn't able to find a Find a Grave memorial page for him or to discover where he's actually buried. If any of you happen to know, again, please share in the comments section down below. There only appear to be about a hundred or so grave sites here, which makes this one of the smallest cemeteries I've visited, other than private family cemeteries. And even though I have visited other desert cemeteries similar to this, I don't recall ever seeing cactus in a cemetery before. Some of my favorite plants are cactus, so I do like seeing them here. It's just pretty unexpected. The Daniel family has quite a few marked graves here, and they're also all listed on findagrave.com. Unfortunately, there's no biographical information included. It would be interesting to know who they were. Some of them were born back in the 1800s, so these wooden crosses with their names have to be fairly recent. Have any of you been here before? Or have any of you happened to notice this cemetery while passing by on Interstate 10? Even though I probably won't be visiting too many new cemeteries in person for a while, since my time is mostly being spent now taking care of my mom, I did take a road trip back to the Midwest last summer and visited many, many cemeteries that I still haven't shared with you. So I'll be editing and uploading those in the coming weeks and months, as well as my visits to my mom. So stay tuned because some of my best cemetery visits and trips down memory lane are still to come. And this week I'd like to thank my latest Patreon supporters, Chris Rasmussen and George Salling Jr. I'd also like to thank Barb Cavern and Suzanne Spears for increasing their pledges. Thanks so much, Chris, George, Barb, and Suzanne for helping to make these trips possible. So as always, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody. And I hope to see you next time.